by uh, Dr. Brad Hines, who's with the University of Minnesota West Central Research and Outreach Center. And um, he's going to be talking about thermal and electrical energy and water consumption in a Midwest dairy farmer. So, good to go. Very good, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the work uh, that we've been doing at our research center at the University of Minnesota in the western part of the state. Some of you were there uh, that went on the tour uh, earlier in the week on Tuesday, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the dairy production system and where we go. So really what, what we wanted to do, this project started maybe five years ago. Uh, we were very interested in the uh, energy audits on dairy farms and uh, what's happening on dairies as far as uh, energy usage, uh, water usage, uh, and how to sort of uh, mitigate some of those issues. Uh, so really what our goal was to develop and uh, evaluate some of these energy optimized systems. So our, I'll, I'll describe a little bit about our dairy in, in a minute here and, and talk about some of the changes that we've done. And then that really leads us into a life cycle assessment for uh, dairy production <coughs> systems that we're trying to do on our farms and really move that on to uh, commercial farms as well. Uh, so a little bit about our dairy. Uh, we're about 250 cows uh, twice a day. Um, milking, we're a little bit unique. We are a, a more of a pasture-based dairy production system. We have actually two herds there. One is a conventional dairy herd uh, and the other is a pasture-based or organic dairy herd. And the overhead one is our, sort of our uh, dairy uh, barn. It also has a tie stall barn and a million and a half gallon lagoon uh, out back in the top of the picture. So our uh, existing dairy, uh, like I said, has a million and a half gallon like lagoon. Uh, and we're still trying to work out. We're, we're actually uh, developing some projects to actually take the heat off the manure and, and transfer that into heating of buildings and things. We're not quite there yet, but uh, in the process, we've installed uh, solar thermal systems to uh, chill water and uh, take heat away from milk. Um, and typical, our, our bulk tanks, uh, two for our, our, both of our herds uh, that we have uh, and all the equipment that goes around with that. Um, we've also made some improvements uh, as far as uh, renewable energy to try and, uh, well, our goal is to have a net zero uh, milking facility. Uh, so we're trying to do that by putting in different solar and wind installations, as well as trying to further uh, take heat basically from our manure lagoon uh, into the future and, and make our uh, production system net zero. So with that, we're putting some solar systems up. Uh, the, the big ones are, are for the dairy. Some of these other ones here are for uh, swine production systems uh, as well. Uh, our goal is to have a you know, somewhat of a net zero uh, finishing system as well. And also uh, incorporating some of those aspects into solar production for um, shading of dairy cattle. Uh, so really what we've done is looked at the uh, baseline uh, energy um, audits, uh, heating, so natural gas, because we use uh, natural gas uh, water heaters in the past, looking at our water usage and, and milk production. And this data is uh, from uh, a few years ago from when we first started, but we're still continuing in it, collecting that data and, and working on that uh, right now and developing some additional models. So really what we did was collect a, a bunch of energy usage loads uh, in, our, in our dairy barn. Uh, you can see we have a whole bunch of sensors uh, everywhere coming out of circuit panels. Uh, uh, probably the university would not approve of that, but oh well. Uh, and uh, collecting water usage, so we have well, a bunch of water flow meters that we're collecting all of that data. And at the time, we were collecting 20 electric current sensors, 11 water sensors, uh, and getting the natural gas usage from the utility. Uh, so we collected all, all of the, the data loggers and really have, uh, over this time period, uh, two and a half million data points uh, where we can collect the, door, the data every 10 seconds. So a little bit about some of the, the results that we find. So uh, working with this, I'm a little more of an extension uh, person. So we're going to talk, we're, we're going to show some pictures and, 
and graphs about how to do this. So it, at the time, we had two different vault tanks. So uh, we, we uh, uh, upgraded our, our facility uh, to incorporate a, another pasture-based dairy herd. So we had an, an old vault tank on the right, which is our reciprocating uh, compressor and a scroll compressor uh, that, that we've used. And we actually monitored those. If you, when we started monitoring those, we found that uh, the scroll compressor, which uh, you know, if we if we look at your typical Midwest dairy uh, here in, in Minnesota, Wisconsin, there's a lot of reciprocating co compressors out there. So uh, they're using about 30% more energy uh, to produce um, per per uh, hundred weight of milk. So. Uh, by using our, our upgraded compressors, we're finding that we can save 30% in, in energy cost uh, over that time period, and that's quite significant. Um, one thing was uh, uh, VFD vacuum pump motors. So we we did not, those are quite popular, I, I know, and we did not have one on our, our dairy. Uh, it was just not installed, uh, you know, an older facility that we, that was built in the 70s. Uh, never really upgraded, but so we we got some grant dollars and were able to put one in. And you'll notice that uh, when we installed it, we were you know quite high, around 50 to 60 kilowatt hours. And when we installed that VFD, we went down to 10. So we really decreased the energy usage just by putting in a frequency drive on our motors. And really, you know, the farmers that we work with, uh, you know, don't really understand. You know that you can save a lot of energy just by making some of these simple costs, and you know we've calculated out there our payback uh, about three years, not quite three years. So really, some of these simple things that we don't really think about, even from our our dairy perspective at the university, how we can save some of that energy. Uh, this is if you look at hot water usage. So really our our dairy uses a, a lot of hot water I'll show you that here in a second and it, from a daily perspective it's up and down uh, so when you have a, a gas water heater uh, things don't necessarily match when you're trying to uh, use a pressure washer to clean milking parlors and wash equipment at the same time plus plus wash a bunch of towels that you use for milking cows and that really your your flow rates are increased quite significantly the two peaks there are, are basically milking times or just after milking when we're trying to clean everything up. So we're using a bunch of hot water and well, really we, we were running out of hot water. We, we didn't have enough. So we're washing milking lines with cold water basically because we tend to use, use all of our water at that time. Uh, from a daily uh, standpoint, so this was uh, just an example across the one of when we first started um, uh, collecting our data, uh, the water usage is you know between a thousand and fourteen hundred gallons per day. So it, it certainly depends on uh, a lot of things. Uh, what we're using, most of that at hot water, we're about four hundred gallons per day, and a lot you know it's really cleaning is is the the main reason for for hot water in our part of our system. So we looked at electricity usage. A few um, over the time period, so these are across the four years of, of this particular data. Uh, it's a little interesting. So our dairy is seasonal. Uh, well, it's two seasons. So we use less electricity in February and March because we're milking fewer cows. You know, we can milk 150 cows in February and March, and then in middle of June go back up to 300. So it's very fluctuating in, in cow numbers, and the same in the fall. But across the, the time, you know, we're using about 300 kilowatt hours of, of electricity on a daily basis. And we've really gone down, you know, the, the top line is 2013. That was when we started monitoring these things without a lot of our renewable energy upgrades that we've done. So we were using a lot more energy back then compared to what we are today. Uh, these are just uh, some examples of what um, can be used and uh, as far as our you know two compressors are uh, in the green and purple it's kind of hard to see uh, that the reciprocating compressor so that's our old 25 year old compressor is using way more energy than what it should on a daily basis um, 
basically vacuum pumps, dryers, ventilation, uh, and heaters. You'll, uh, there's a big red line there uh, that is off in the summertime and spikes in October and turns back off in April. And uh, well, I'll show you that in a second what that might be. Uh, if you look at it basically uh, across the time period, you know, we started monitoring a lot of more things. So we put sensors on and then we have to figure out that we're coming up with 20% of the electricity that we're, we can't monitor. So we have to go back and try and figure out because when you start adding a lot of things into circuit panels, things don't get labeled and, and you're trying to figure out where all this energy usage is coming from, which we actually figured out on some dairies that we're working with as well. Uh, one thing that we noticed in, in, our, in our winter uh, activities is uh, we saw that um, during the months of the winter time, we're trying to figure out why our energy spiked uh, and went double uh, in basically overnight. So we can go to a hunt from 150 kilowatt hours to 300. And if anybody doesn't know what that is, that's an elk house heater, a $20 heater. Uh, how many of you have space heaters in your office? I know one of my graduate students sitting here does. <laughs> Uh, so your your twenty dollars space heater is uh, using a lot of energy during the day and costing you way more. It, it's uh, about five to eight dollars a day is what a space heater co uh, costs you. So basically, we put in a, a variable frequency drive on our vacuum pump, but then turn the space heater on so the water doesn't freeze and we erase the payback. So that's that's what happens. So turn your space heater. Um, basically, our, our total energy us usage uh, fluctuates across the time period. Um, goes down in the summertime, obviously. Winter winter uh, doubles because of heaters. Um, most of the it is uh, heaters for people, um, you know, so they remain comfortable in the parlor and can milk uh, when it's not 30 below in western Minnesota. So that's why we see a lot of uh, energy usage in, in the winter time versus the summertime. And water. Uh, we've maintained our water usage around uh, 1,400 gallons per day across that time period. That does not include cow drinking water. Uh, natural gas, uh, again, uh, is really high in, in the in the winter time because of heaters uh, trying to produce all of the uh, energy for hot water. Uh, if you look at it from a, a per cow standpoint, and a, uh, if you start looking at it from a life cycle assessment. Uh, Per kilogram of, of milk, uh, electricity is uh, quite low from that uh, standpoint, uh, only 0 0.08 per kilogram of milk uh, from a kilowatt hour. Natural gas is, uh, from that standpoint, uh, more from an energy uh, usage point on a per cow basis. Uh, and water, we're using uh, quite a bit of water, that's uh, 1.8 million liters of water per year for a 250 cow dairy. So water is our, our biggest resource that we're using uh, in our uh, facility compared to natural gas and electricity. So really what, what we're trying to do is, is convert some of those natural gas loads into electric loads. Um, it's you know kind of tough, I guess. You have to figure out whether natural gas is more, uh, you know, natural gas can be cheap now, but it might go up in the future compared to electricity. So it's one of those economic balancing acts. If you look at the breakdowns uh, from a water usage standpoint, most of it is, is parlor cleaning uh, and washing and sanitizing equipment. Uh, that's the, the biggest uses uh, for water in our dairy. Uh, we use a washing machine that's for towels for milking cows. But really, it's the, it's the equipment, it's the milking equipment that is utilizing the most water. Uh, from an energy standpoint, uh, it's mostly 31% uh, is parlor heat, so that's uh, basically radiant heat for um, the milking, for milkers to be comfortable. So you're milking cows and you don't want to be uh, cold in the winter time, you turn the heat up. So that really sucks a lot of energy. Uh, water heating is 22%, so that's, uh, and those are both natural gas loads. Uh, and we're, we're doing some upgrades now to remove the natural gas and, and convert to an electric standpoint. Uh, and also using the heat from the milk. So we're putting, we've put in a, a 
chiller uh, and a heat pump to be able to basically take milk, uh, heat from milk. So we can basically take, what we're doing now is taking a heat out of the milk. The milk is 101 degrees. We can chill it down to 38 degrees in about a second and a half. So we're removing all of that heat, storing that as hot water, and being able to utilize the hot water. Uh, so this is our, our total energy uh, usage, pretty consistent across the time periods. Uh, natural gas has been going down because we've been improving some of the electrical uh, aspects to it. Uh, so really, we uh, use about uh, 440 kilowatt hours per cow per year uh, in our uh, production system, um, about $30 a day uh, for, for that or to just basically milk our 300 cows. Uh, we use 21 thirds of natural gas uh, per cow per year, uh, about $11 per day, and about 900 gallons of water per cow per year. Uh, and that does not include drinking water, so we've, we've taken the drinking water aspect out of that uh, for cows, so uh, this is mainly for milking facilities and harvesting of milk, so we can really uh, if you include drinking water, we would use certainly a lot more. Uh, so what about future research? So uh, some of you were at, at the poster session um, on, on Wednesday. My uh, graduate student had a, a poster. Uh, we've installed a lot of energy monitoring equipment in some dairy barns in, in western part of the state, ranging from 200 cows to uh, almost 10,000 cows. Um, this is, is the 10,000 cow dairy trying to monitor all of their circuit panels. Uh, and everything that we're monitoring uh, from milking to fans to manure systems, um, uh, lights, vacuum pumps, you name it, we have sensors on everything uh, to be able to, to monitor this. We're getting um, basically every minute we can see what how much energy these farms are using. Uh, these are the, the four farms um, and use, basically the conclusion is not every farm is the same. So. Uh, you you know the 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 ten thousand cow dairy in, in the upper left uh, has a you know manure separator system uh, doesn't use very much energy uh, for for manure from a larger standpoint uh, the one on the far right use has a manure separator uh, for four hundred cows and uses a lot of energy for it so uh, there's a lot of differences the biggest one uh, in green that's fans. Fans are, are, are the biggest uh, energy hog in, in dairy farms. So with that, uh, we certainly think a lot of funding uh, opportunities uh, to be able to do this research uh, and continue into the future. And if you have any questions or want to know more, uh, please let us know. Thank you. solar predict uh, as far as dairy energy I think solar is going, going to probably work better for the smaller farms uh, from an energy standpoint and that's why we're we're installing a lot of solar installations to be able to help with that I think as the farms get larger you know that the 10,000 cow dairy you can't put up enough solar to, to combat that they, they're probably talking wind generation large large-scale wind generation to be able to offset their electrical use but I Uh, not a problem. Not not a problem at all. It, uh, our, you know, if you have the solar at an angle, it, for the most part, uh, it warms up enough to, to melt the, the snow off. I think they maybe had to do it on some of the swine barns, but the angle is a little bit lower on those. Your barns are natural, dairy barns. Yes, enough slope. Yes. Enough slope.